Today on the Facts of Life Insurance, we discuss policy reviews. Even if you think your policy is sound, um, and even if you trust your agent um, 100%, um, and even if he's an independent agent, you should be reviewing your policies every two, three years, four, five years, something in there. Uh, you've got to keep your eyes on it uh, to make sure it's performing right or you're not missing something in the market. Reviewing your life insurance policy isn't going to break anything or mess anything up. Um, you're not going to hurt it by calling the insurance company and asking for an enforce illustration. Um, if it's good, if it's sound, and you're happy with the way it's performing and it's performing well in comparison to what you could get now, then you can leave it alone. You did uh, find it to be subpar. It was underperforming or uh, it was running out of steam or there was something better out there to, uh, to get in, in place of the one that you have now. Um, some folks might think, well, if I move my policy over to a new policy, then I'm going to incur surrender charges on my cash value or new surrender charges on the new policy. Well, that could be true. It also could be not true. Uh, there are insurance policies out there that have a high early cash value option where uh, your dollar for dollar cash value to premium in the first year. Uh, so that's just, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a fallacy. Old policies, universal life policies to be specific. Uh, it's been talked about for a long time now because many of these policies are running out of steam. They were sold um, based on the idea that the, uh, the interest rate on the cash value in the policy was going to be a lot higher throughout the life of the policy. And that hasn't turned out to be the case. And so a lot of folks if they have not been reviewing their policy periodically, they could look and discover, hey, this thing is running out of steam. It's not going to be around in the next five or 10 years and definitely not going to be around uh, at the premiums that I'm paying today uh, when I die. And so it's completely you know, in ruin if you don't change something. I, I hear from time to time, and not very often, that um, uh, folks are worried about the new two-year contestable period that comes along with buying a new policy anytime. And I know where that comes from. It comes from the current agent who uh, is trying to save his policy and keep it on the books. Um, you know, you, you weren't worried about the contestable period when you bought the policy to begin with, and, and I don't know why you'd worry about it now. And what a contestable period is, is a two-year period of time where if, uh, if you die, the, the insurance company has the ability to look back at the application and see if you made any material misrepresentations. In other words, they're going to look to see if you lied on your application. If you didn't lie on your application, then nothing can happen. If you did lie on your application, the insurance company can change the plan to fit um, to fit what it should have been. And so they can actually raise the premium uh, and take that out of the death benefit. But the insurance companies aren't seeking to, uh, to, to not pay uh, the death claim in the contestable period. Well, if your current agent is telling you that you're making a bad decision for changing your current policy, it's because he's losing money some sort of way. He's losing money because he's not the one selling you the new policy, or he's losing money because of the thing in, in the insurance business called persistency. Um, a captive agent, this goes back to another video that we've done, a captive agent um, is compelled to keep all of his policies on the books for as long as they'll stay on the books. And even if they're underperforming, uh, there's no motivation uh, from your agent who is a captive agent working for, for an insurance company to help you change that policy, even if, it, even if it's a, a better deal for you.
if you've got a policy that looks like it's failing, don't assume that you have to keep it and or put extra premium into it to keep it going. At least find out first. Let's find out what your options are. We can take an informal uh, application and, and send it out to multiple carriers and see if we can if we can improve your plan, beat it, uh, save it. Um, and we may be able to save it at the, at the company that it's at now. We may be able to improve it where it is if we don't have any other options. But let's find out first. Here's a way to think about it that might be easy easier to understand. Um, most folks who are buying life insurance have bought a house. Most people who bought a house have refinanced a house. We have seen mortgage rates come down incredibly. I don't know if a lot of people would have thought that they'd ever go below 4% for a 30-year fixed uh, mortgage. And uh, some folks who are watching this have probably had a mortgage at 12%. And so just, in the, just like in the way that uh, you would look to refinance a mortgage, you can do the same thing with a life insurance policy. Uh, and the reason is that mortality rates have changed. Just like interest rates have changed, mortality rates have changed. And so uh, the mortality cost at the insurance company in your policy could be out of date. You may need to get into more of a favorable algorithm with a new policy. If I showed you that you could save 500 bucks a month on your mortgage by refinancing from a 6% interest rate on a 30 year fixed to a 3.75% interest rate on a 30 year fixed mortgage, you'd probably do it. Uh, the same thing works for the life insurance. We may be able to save you an incredible amount of money or uh, increase the death benefit on your policy by 10, 20, 30, 50%. It's, I, we see it all the time. I was working recently with uh, one of my partners on a, uh, uh, an airline pilot who is close to retiring. He has or had uh, about five permanent uh, policies that were sold to him by a captive agent over a period of time. Um, all of the policies were, were pretty rich in cash value uh, it it, uh, it came out that he didn't really need uh, the cash value. Um, however, the death benefit was of incredible importance to him, and he needed more. So, uh, what we had was about a four hundred and thirty thousand dollar portfolio of insurance death benefit, four hundred thirty thousand dollars of death benefit, and we were able to take just the cash value that were that was inside those five policies and transfer that over to a new carrier, to a new uh, product of insurance and get him somewhere around $800,000 of insurance. Now, he doesn't have to pay any more premiums and that insurance is gonna stay in force for the remainder of his life. That, uh, that example is a little bit extreme. In this example, this is a pretty common one. Uh, so, husband and wife, they get married uh, there's a need there, right? There's an income replacement need for the surviving spouse. Ten years in, let's say there are three children in the picture. Well, the income replacement need has gone up because we have, uh, we have more mouths to feed, we have college costs to take into consideration, and, uh, and at that time we, we may discover that the policy that was bought originally may also not be appropriate price-wise. And so there's a review of the policy that's in place, but also a review of the plan. Let's fast forward 20 years. Maybe those three children are out of college and they have jobs of their own. And uh, you know maybe we've got a fully funded retirement plan at this point. And so the, the need changes again. And so you know maybe a, a policy that you have uh, for the purposes of taking care of the whole family, maybe it was $2 million of, of face amount, maybe we only need a $500,000 policy now, maybe less. And so you wouldn't want to throw away all that premium on insurance that you don't need. Join us next time as we discuss diabetes and its impact on life insurance.